Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. Um, today in the chapel we have Proverbs 17:16. Of what use is money in the hand of a fool, since he has no desire to get wisdom? So just looking to keep things on track. And yeah. So this week's been a little tough, but it's doing okay. The first funeral was Sunday, and that was for um, Colton's grandparents, and Colton's is next Sunday's, and roommate's stepdad is this friend, so, mm -hmm. being kind of a rough week, um, all right, so, off the mannequin, off the hooks, I do have a couple of things. Uh, off the mannequin. These here. Um, I finally finished the strap for this. I, it's a birthday present, but I don't need it right away. So it's a crossbody, and it is now finished in August, I believe. So I'm way ahead um, of the birthday things for the people that I work with. So, um, then I also took time to throw a hem in the skirt. So I have it done and ready for work. I love that material. I wish there was some more colors, some more whatever. I'm going to have to, uh, um, look online. I'm going to have to get the name of it and then look online and see uh, what I can find. Uh, there has to be an array of colors, and I really like that material. I like working with it. So um, then this last Saturday, I did get a break um, from bad stuff, and I watched RJ on the radio, or on the radio, <laughs> on the TV again, and I picked this up, and I have, it's just super long. It seems to take forever. I'm on the third row back across. And I guess it's because I'm really watching more TV when he's on there than not. But he was up at Port Scott and I got to watch him rope. He did a good job. A little long for any money. But he tied two and he was good to go. So really good. Um, so I worked on that, uh, and then Saturday I just, oh, Saturday and Sunday I was kind of bummed. Um, Sunday I had limited time, but I did get in here and I had dug through my stash so that I could give, um, my daughter anything that I no longer wanted. And when I dug through my stash, I found a material that I had so wanted to make a skirt out of. And so I did. Um, I've actually already worked for work, so it's not ironed anymore. Um, I left a decorative oops, stitch on there from the serger, and I love it. But, yeah, the only thing I'm worried about is this is cotton, and I don't know if it shrunk in the laundry, so I'm hoping it didn't. But, yeah, I found a cute little pattern that I really like the way it lays. I've got to make some adjustments to it, but I made that as well. So... And then finally, I'm gonna pick you up. I hope. Just do. Uh, there we go. Okay. And the last thing that I worked on is this shirt, and I've also wore it. I already have two here, but when I'm standing in front of it, that's not good. Hitch move. Let's see if I can move this. Oh, that's. It. All the cord I thought. No, there we go. There, there we go. Okay. So I don't like the collar on this. It doesn't. It lays. This shirt lays better on the mannequin. Everything lays better on the mannequin mannequin than it does me. But I did this swoopy, and it does bubble all through here when I wear it. Um. 
I don't like the how the back of the neck does not lay flat. Um, I will have to work on that. And then I am going to adjust. These are just on here and I, I stitch in the ditch down here to make it. But I think I'm going to stitch across here just to make it stay in place because when I'm working it kind of shifts. Um, the mannequin does not move. So you don't know how this is going to move, you know, when you're doing it. I love these sleeves. These sleeves are super simple and they fit well. And I will be repeating this on every shirt that I make for the office unless it's long sleeve. So this is, I have decided on this kind and I've decided on a solid piece uh, frame for my shirt, this sleeve, and then I'll figure out the front and the decorative at some point. Um, all of them are usable, but I'll find one that I really, really like and that'll be my thing. So, but yeah, so I did that. Um, I don't feel like I got a lot done. Sorry about that. But it's because my time wasn't all in once. Uh, it was broke up. Okay, so I had to go do this and do that. And so, yeah. So I worked on all that. Now I do have one other thing that happened this weekend that took up a lot of my time. And I am going to put it in right here. Tiny bridges. Yeah, there you are. Come on. I've been feeding him over here. Come on. Yeah. He might or might not come over this way. Just gonna unbuy the bowl. Come on. Tail's all puffed up again. It's just me. Just me. Just me. He's getting pretty good about letting me touch him. Uh, he's figured out he likes that, huh? But if you go to open the door or anything for the shop, then he takes off running back underneath the car. I've got wet food here, some dry kitten food and some water that I keep down for him. Um, the wet food, you get a little bit of a belly, which is good. Um, the wet food, he gets in small bites, like a quarter of a little can, tin can at a time. And I started him doing that like three or four times a day. He gets less than a can a day, so, yeah. But there he is, tiny britches. Okay, so first I was calling it hot dog because that's all he'd come out to eat. Um, then roommate just started calling it tiny britches. And that kind of stuck, and so I think tiny is what we're going to call it. Every time it runs out from underneath the car at me, it, it doesn't matter what time of day, it runs out, I'm feeding it, and it comes out all puffed up and heart hitched, uh, arched sideways with his tail puffed. It's still this big around, but it's, it's probably not this big. We're unsure of where it came from. It does like to be touched. We finally got to where we can touch it and stuff. And it, it's still, like I said, hisses up. And it's funny, but it's not. Um, but, yeah. So, it's going to be an outside, I guess, kind of a barn kitty. But we're going to call it a shop kitty for now. Um, the first day it spent its time in the shop with roommate. Um, roommate was 
out there working and uh, it was kind of funny, but it's not because roommate would be doing something and then roommate would turn and go a different direction. Here would come the little kitten and sniff where roommate had been. It was funny, but it wasn't. Um, yeah, it was hilarious. Uh, roommate does not like cats or so roommate says. Um, but yeah, it's here to stay. Neither one of us could let it starve. Um, it's so tiny. And then I went and got eh, dry cat food and I keep dry out when we're not here just so that he's, we keep saying he, I don't know whether it's he or he. Um, just to make sure that it's fed. I want to take that edge off so they don't quit feeling like each meal is its last. Um, so if I keep a little handful of dry out there, it can nibble on that. And then of course I've got water and two or three times a day, I'll go and take out wet food, just little. So their the cans are about that tall and they're about that big around and I cut them in force. It's not even a spoonful. But he, it's a little guy. So, but I want to take that feeling of I'm not going to be fed anymore off. I don't want him to feel that terrible tummy that he felt when we first started coaxing him out with hot dogs. Um, it was funny because the night that we found out, I don't even remember what night it was. I say it was like Thursday night. We said we heard one. Yeah. Friday, I think, is the day we gave him hot dog. We saw him. A roommate saw him. And uh, I put out hot dog. Hot dog disappeared. Um, and then I want to say Saturday because that's the day we were mowing and the shop doors were open a lot. And so somehow it might've been Friday night that we were mowing and stuff. I can't remember. Anyway, that next morning, uh, it was in, it had to be Saturday because it was locked in the shop Friday night. And then Saturday morning, um, we found it. And so it stayed in the shop like all Saturday and then Sunday, finally we got it out. Um, it wouldn't come to us, wouldn't. So I moved the food every day closer to the door to get it out. We didn't mean to lock it in there. I didn't even know it had gone in there, but it would scurry underneath the workbenches and stuff. And we were trying to get the lawnmowers done and um, roommates, stepdad had a house that he, um, was unable to care for it. it. needed to be mowed is what it is. And so he went over there and uh, he mowed it and stuff. And so we were serving some lawnmowers and then I was mowing here. And um, anyway, roommate stepdad just, he, he couldn't take care of it there for a while, a while. And so it was really tall. And so uh, roommate and I went and took care of it. So Yeah. Anyway, we were in, out, around, did all kinds of stuff, but yeah, didn't ever intend to lock that cat in there. But the next morning we found it, we fed it. It's fine. Uh, it lives underneath that, that car out there. Um, and it does, even if you walk in the shop now, it hisses at you. So I, I don't know if it will ever be back in the shop, but yeah, we're hoping it'll eat mice when it gets a lot bigger than the mice because right now the mice are bigger than him. So. All right, I'm going to get off of here. That really is the week in a nutshell. Um, I'm going to go to work. I'm taking all day Friday off for a funeral. And then, uh, of course, Sunday is another funeral. It's just a rough week. So from Memorial Day to now, it's been kind of rough. Yesterday, I just didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to go to work. I want to go to bed. Feel better today. And 
I make myself do stuff. So, all right. Uh, I did in going through the fabrics, I found another um, fabric that I make a blouse out of and it will be kind of like that one, only a little different. So, all right, I'm going to get off here and uh, get ready for work. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.